I'm either massively underutilizing my 16 inch MacBook Pro or I've nailed the perfect use case for it. I'll let you be the judge of that. The 16 inch MacBook Pro is a little bit like my car. I have absolutely no way of putting it through its paces in normal everyday life. And if I tried to, I'd end up wrapped around a tree. Regardless, this is a good thing. It means I'm forced to respect that laptop and use as much of its performance as makes sense. Sure, it's tempting to upgrade my cameras to 8K beasts and start learning how to do things like visual effects and stuff, but that wouldn't make me a better creator. So instead, I've turned my 16 inch MacBook Pro into the perfect production machine. As a result, it's turned into one of the best investments for my business. So let's dive into the components of what makes this laptop an ultra long term for me. Firstly, a quick word from today's sponsor, Trend Micro. Cleaner One Pro makes it super easy to remove unnecessary files. So if you are one of these people, a bit like me, who keeps unnecessary massive files on their Macs, I do this all the time, but you forget they're there and you don't know where they are, Cleaner One Pro makes it much easier to find those big files and get rid of them. It shows exactly what junk is taking up space, either via a quick clean or a much more detailed system optimizer, and you can choose exactly what needs to go. I'm also a very big fan of their duplicate photo section where you can sniff out those photos you've taken multiple times and just get shot of them straight away. There's a great startup manager, which is a fantastic feature to find out what's going on when your Mac starts up. And there's a brilliant app management section where you can much more easily get rid of apps completely from your Mac. And the features go on and on. There's a file shredder if you want to completely remove files. There's a toolbar that monitors your CPU, network usage, memory usage, and gives you that access to the quick scan for junk files. It is quite simply brilliant. So thank you to Trend Micro for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out what Cleaner One Pro is all about, just click the link in my description. I've already made a couple of videos about the 16 inch MacBook Pro. I'll link to the most recent one above, but I thought I'd just give you a quick reminder of the spec that I chose. So I opted for the M1 Max chip with 32 gig of unified memory and a two terabyte SSD. I thought upping the memory to 64 gigabyte felt a bit needless, given the fact that I'm mainly using this for video and audio production. And I didn't really fancy selling my house to afford any more storage. This resulted in a laptop that cost me just over £3,500 in the UK. A lot of people ask if I go for Apple Care Plus. I don't always, and I didn't with this particular laptop, which might sound a bit bonkers given the price of it, but that was kind of the point really. £3,500 was already a lot of money to spend on this machine. And in my experience, Macs last pretty well. I shouldn't say this, I will touch wood now, but they are incredibly durable and I've never had to call on Apple Care Plus. I know I'm shooting myself in the foot with this, but if you don't think you can afford Apple Care Plus or you don't want to spend that extra money because it's not cheap, then it's worth taking the risk because these things are so well made. But the resulting spec of my 16 inch MacBook Pro gives me everything I need and a very, very, very high performance ceiling for the future, which is why I think I'm gonna keep this thing for quite a long time. For example, the M1 Max chip that I chose has the maximum number of GPU cores, which is 32, and coupled with more than enough memory, like I mentioned before, it just makes this the perfect video editing device. That two terabytes of storage has worked out really well as well. As you'll discover, I use external SSD for editing video, but having all of that space natively on the laptop has been really useful on certain occasions where I've needed to move my Final Cut library to the Mac. This laptop was a huge investment for my business, but the good news is that I do not have a single ounce of buyer's remorse. So that's a good start, but what about software? What do I rely on to run the production side of this business? As I've mentioned previously, I rarely use the 16 inch MacBook Pro for anything but video, photo and audio editing, which means the list of apps on that particular Mac is rather short. I am a Final Cut Pro user for my sins. It's an app that I can absolutely fly through whether I'm doing A-roll editing, adding B-roll or doing that all important final polish. It does have a few issues, which I will make a video about at some stage, I think. Funny enough, I do talk about this quite a bit in my weekly newsletter. If you're not signed up to that yet, there's a link in the description. It's basically a private video, which sounds a bit weird, but it's not. It's me just sat here talking about behind the scenes stuff, but it's a private video that I send to my newsletter subscribers completely free. Sign up in the description and you'll hear a bit more about that kind of thing. Despite this, I have absolutely no desire to switch video editing software, it would be a huge job. And 
Just a piece of advice, if you are a video creator, audio engineer, whatever it might be, if you find a tool that works for you, stick with it. Because just swapping for the sake of it takes a huge amount of time that you probably don't have. I certainly don't have it. And even with those little flaws that are inherent within all these applications, it's much better to stick with what you know. And the other reason for using Final Cut Pro is because it works so well with the M1 architecture Obviously, it just flies through most tasks. When it comes to audio, Logic Pro is like a pair of old slippers for me. I've been using this software since I was a kid, basically, and long before Steve Jobs got his hands on it. It was originally developed by a company called eMagic, which was bought by Apple back in 2002, I think. And I spent most of my formative years learning how to make music on that brilliant piece of audio editing software. These days, Logic plays a pivotal role in my video production process with all of the vocal recordings that you're hearing now heading through it for a dose of normalization and EQ treatment before being exported for Final Cut Pro. And although I make nowhere near the amount of music I used to, I have absolutely promised myself this year to get back into the music production game because I miss it so much and I'd love to make some content about it. As you'd guess, photography plays a huge role in this channel as well, and that's where Lightroom comes in. Now, I'm an avid user these days of the latest version, but I did use Lightroom Classic for, well, for far too long, basically. Photoshop's on there as well, but I only really use that if I need to manipulate an image, which is normally just resizing it, to be honest, and occasionally removing unsightly things from thumbnail photos. So these production powerhouses are joined by a bunch of smaller utilities that I could not live without on my 16-inch MacBook Pro. They include Text Expander, which I made a guide about, which I'll link to in the video description, One Password for password management, I'll leave a link above to a video I made about that recently, and then the usual kind of office duty suspects like Fantastic and Spark. On to the peripherals, and I do love my accessories. The MacBook Pro, in my opinion, is never complete without a bunch of peripherals to really bring it alive. Apple has been kind to us this time around because the new MacBook Pros come complete with enough ports to satisfy most users. And this approach has reduced the number of dongles that I need to take with me just to get stuff done. As mentioned earlier, I edit my videos directly from external SSDs, and my weapons of choice for that task come from SanDisk, and in particular, their one terabyte Extreme Pro. I've got two of those. They offer up to 2,000 megabits per second read speeds, although it's worth bearing in mind that you do not achieve that on the MacBook Pro. It's not capable of doing those sort of speeds with external SSDs, but they are plenty fast enough for 4K video editing. And to prove that point, I've recently added a two terabyte extreme edition of the SanDisk SSD, which has just 1000 megabits per second read speed, and it performs identically. There is just one other accessory that I'd like to mention today, and I do apologize if I sound like a broken record about this, but it is the MX Master 3 from Logitech. Don't get me wrong, the trackpad on the MacBook Pro remains the best on the market, but as a video editor, nothing beats the MX Master 3 for sheer ergonomical joy. I've just made that phrase up, but I don't care. Now, I will be revealing more about my 16-inch MacBook Pro desk setup in a future video, so make sure you hit the bell, well, subscribe, then hit the bell, not to miss it. It would be understandable if you looked at my use case for the 16-inch MacBook Pro and questioned my sanity. For instance, if I'm writing, emailing, budgeting, or doing anything else that doesn't involve audio or video production, the most expensive laptop I've ever purchased remains tucked away in its protective case. In fact, it only ever gets used when I'm making a video, editing a podcast, or sprucing up a raw photo. But that's kind of the point. If you've got the budget for it and you're running a similar business to mine, having a Mac that is just for production purposes is a brilliant way to both prolong its life and keep it as clean and damage-free as possible. Although I did screw up on the latter recently when my iPhone 13 mini came into contact with my 16-inch MacBook Pro. I'll leave a link in the description to a blog where I talk about that. The fact that this particular production machine is portable means I'm always on schedule with my content. So videos are consistently scheduled well in advance and I can smash through an edit of the eight or 16 podcast first thing on a Saturday morning from the comfort of the dining room table. But I'm curious, how do you use yours? How do you put your 16 inch or 14 inch MacBook Pro to use? Do you use it like me in a very kind of structured, defined way? Or does it do everything for you? And if you've just bought your first Mac, I've recently put together 10 tips for brand new Mac owners. Although to be honest, there'll be something in there for seasoned pros as well. Keep watching for a link to that video. 